Our children are the future of this country. Our mission should be to teach our children how to act responsibly in everything they do, and that includes financial responsibility. This is what Young Americans Bank, Young Americans Education Foundation, and Americown are all about, about reaching out to young people in their language, at their pace, and in their world. Bill Daniels was a born entrepreneur. As a young man during the Depression, he sold newspapers door to door. He was one of the very early pioneers in the cable television business. Bill was a self-made man, and if he were here today, he would tell you that hard work and integrity were key to his success. Bill talked about the first time he went into a bank and cited it as one of the most intimidating things of his lifetime. My first visit to a bank was after World War II and I was 25, and I had never been in a bank. I felt like I was either going in for brain surgery or the defendant in a murder trial. Banks are intimidating. In 1984, Bill Daniels read a newspaper article about a fifth grade class that was doing a project. The teacher decided that it would be a good experience for them to go to a bank and borrow the $200 they needed for the project. The bank turned them down, as you can imagine. Bill couldn't believe that. He thought, what a wonderful opportunity to teach young people. And the more he thought about that, the more a bank for young people made sense. I just wanted our young people to know that uh, our free enterprise system uh, in this great nation of ours offers bright, hardworking young people the greatest opportunity to be found anywhere on the face of the earth. Bill was concerned that savings rates in America were very low, and he wanted young people to understand how important savings rates are, as well as a credit rating. He was concerned that they were not being taught this in the schools, and he was also concerned that many of the parents lacked the financial skills, and without the financial skills themselves, they would probably not teach their children. Bill wanted a state-chartered commercial bank, probably the most difficult route he could have possibly taken. That didn't matter to Bill. He wanted a real bank with real customers, real bank products, and hands-on learning for young people. It was the first bank in the country designed for young people only. In the United States in the 80s, banks were in severe trouble. Thousands of banks were closed over that time period. Bill gave his unconditional support to fund the bank in case there was losses, and he also included it in his estate plan. That was also revolutionary in the world of, of banking in the United States, where a person wrote into his will that he would fund a bank if the bank had financial issues. In dealing with kids, it was really important that we hire the right staff. They needed to be bankers with good experience and money handling experience, but even more important was that they be very good working with kids. And we took people we thought had that aptitude and gave them tremendous amount of training. They needed to learn to shake the kid's hand, to keep the kids primary in the transaction, even if mom and dad kept interfering. Every form and disclosure that's required by regulation had to be custom. We wanted them to be in kid-friendly language that kids of all ages could understand. We needed every transaction to be a learning experience. And we want to teach the young people to learn how to borrow money, to learn what interest is, to learn what obligations are, and above all, teach them integrity, which without, none of us could have been a success in the business world. During the grand opening, media attention was phenomenal. Tonight in Denver, kids and their money have been taken to a whole new level. We were in USA Today, the Washington Post. We had media coverage worldwide for this first and only bank just for kids. In the first three weeks, we opened almost 2,000 accounts. The immediate reaction from the community was really so positive. Families believed in it and saw the value. Kids believed in it and saw the value. And for all of us and for Bill Daniels, that verified his vision. This is a class of one in the legal and banking world. There's nothing else like it in the United States. The reaction was, this is not going to work. And uh, we just proved them wrong. It worked effectively from the first year. And it worked effectively because it was a real bank with a real bank charter and real deposits and real training of these young children as if they were adults going into a bank. 
And so the naysayers went away fairly quickly and grew to appreciate over time that Young Americans Bank was a benefit to the community. Other banks gradually became not just our fans, but our supporters. They gradually came to realize that when these young people actually turned 22, we were going to be done with them and send them on to a regular adult bank, fully trained as good customers that understood how to manage their finances. With the initial success of the bank came a demand from the families of depositors, from educators, from youth organizations to provide additional educational programming and activities. Thus was born the idea of creating a companion organization of the bank called the Young Americans Education Foundation. In 1989, the foundation initiated its activities by launching the first Young Ameritown. The Young Americans Education Foundation will bring a portable mini-city to Denver for six weeks each summer. As many as 600 young people are expected to take advantage of this unique learning experience. Tell them we got to sell more stuff because we don't have money. In response to continued interest in the bank and its programs, Young Americans took its first major step outside of its Cherry Creek confines in 1997 when it formed Rural Ameritown in Ray, Colorado. As educational programs became a more important part of Young Americans, it became clear that those programs needed to be housed in their own separate nonprofit entity. As a result, in 2001, the Young American Center for Financial Education was formed. By the time Bill passed away, the bank had served 42,000 young customers. There were many challenges that we had to face as the organization evolved. It operates in a delicate regulatory framework that required several approvals that were very difficult to get. In fact, many of those approvals were unprecedented and had never been dealt with by regulators before. He carefully planned a structure to ensure the future viability for Young Americans Bank. I'm very proud of Young Americans Bank. It has made a quarter. It probably never will, but it'll be there because I provided funds at my trust, so it'll go on forever. Success to Bill was counted by the number of kids reached and the richness of the experience. How many transactions, how many different accounts, how many different activities did they participate in? It was never about profit for Bill. I just felt, why not a bank for kids? Children exposed to this bank will be years ahead of those not exposed to bank dealings at a young age. And I think young people are entitled to this opportunity.